to the up and comers of Hollywood. I am your host, Marie Finch. This is a YouTube channel and podcast that's dedicated to interviewing professionals in the entertainment business who's up and coming. They share their journeys, confess their challenges, and celebrate their successes with us all. I just have one question for you. When you're watching your favorite actor or musician and on the big screen or on the music video, do you ever ask yourself, who's behind that fabulous costume or that fabulous outfit that they're wearing? Well, that would be the job of a costume designer. If you didn't ask, that's okay too. That just means they did a great job. I'm so excited and honored to introduce our next guest. Her name is Jessica Huerta. She is a wardrobe stylist, co-founder and owner of her very own costume design company, Madame Black Designs, whose work you'll see on print, television, film, mini commercials, and live performances. She has worked with Usher, Trey Songz, Tyga, Guevo Huncho, Lil' Kim, Nikki Reed, and Coldplay, just to name a few. In addition, she's a professional freelance costumer contributing to many blockbuster movies and big TV shows such as Insecure, Station 19, SEAL Team, and Westworld. We are so excited to have her today on Up and Comers of Hollywood. So with that, I'd love to introduce Jessica Huerta. Thank you so much for coming out. I just, I mean, you're, you're amazing. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here, Marie. Your drive was good from yes. OC mm -hmm. to On the Valley. Sunday, yes, um, it was an hour commute, but um, I'm used to it. I, I commute from OC to LA Monday through Friday. So that's, yeah, that's just what I do. Yeah, that's what we do in Los Angeles, folks. Yeah. That's a, you know, it can be 12 miles and it takes 45 minutes, just mm -hmm. so you know. Mm -hmm. Anyway. We want to talk about you, your journey, your, your whole story of how you got into costume designing and take us to the beginning and how you got to Los Angeles. Yeah, um, well, I was born in, in Los Angeles, but um, I grew up in Tucson, Arizona. Um, I, I always wanted to be involved in fashion or um, in, in design and and so I went to school, I studied for it for four years, but it, it didn't seem like I was taking the right courses that would eventually um, gear me in the direction I wanted to go, which is costume design. But um, I tried it all. I tried fashion design, uh, pattern making, and then eventually I started a little company with a photographer. And so little by little, we would book um book package deals where she would photograph the, the customer, whether it's for a wedding or or for a special occasion. Um, we would set it up. Uh, I would make the clothes and do the hair and makeup. And, and yeah, and so we would travel to California. We'd travel to Nevada. And, and then every year we would make a little bit more and, and make more connections. And then eventually we're like, let's move to L.A. That's where most of our our customers are and we had a blast doing it and in the beginning it's like there's no no stress you're doing it you're having fun right you're hanging out meeting new people and like um I don't really have a name for myself but I came up with Madame Black Designs at an early um time in in my design career because a lot of my customers were very eccentric very um um, yeah, they were eccentric um, and free spirit, and so I, I wanted to, to cater to them. And so eventually we moved to L.A. I realized I need to get involved in music because also musicians are very eccentric and, right. and open to, try, to wearing things that um, isn't your everyday um, uh, out, outfit. And so I started designing and building um, more experimental pieces and, and catering to, to musicians as, as like, like the ones you mentioned. And um, yeah, and then that was a fun journey. And then I got into touring a little bit. Um, I, I got to travel a lot that way. And then I 
I decided, okay, I need to do something that's a bit better long term. And I looked into TV and film. And uh, yeah, I, I waited to to go that route because I I felt like once I commit to it, I am gonna commit to it and all the way. So it took me six years to really commit to TV and film, but I did I did the change from music and, and, and traveling to TV and film. And that's kind of where I am right now. Oh, going back when you were in Arizona, mm -hmm. was it right out of high school that you started doing this or um, at what point? Well, I, I met a photographer in high school. So um, I was 18 and we met in glamour shots. So that's where I started. I remember those glamour shots. Yes. yes. In the well, I won't say the year, but yeah, yeah. So, so I started there. That's where my creative um, field started, and then she got fired and and brought me with me on her her new journey of um, starting a business for her photography. And so then I did the hair and makeup, and because I was going to college, once I, once I graduated from high school, I, I jumped right into college, and so then I was designing but also doing these package deals with her and, and then we kind of just like had fun along the way and and um and then eventually while doing that for like a couple of years we moved to LA and and evolved as artists so did you always know that you wanted to get into designs or was it yes. during that glamour shot shots mm -hmm. era i i always wanted to get into design from a young age my aunt would um would illustrate these dolls and, and I would help her um, design the, the outfits and then in high school um, before they had like Pinterest and, and Instagram I they had these kiss dolls and so I would go home after I think this was more like middle school um, I'd go home and download these paper dolls and then just play dress up with them and yeah I I enjoyed that in my free time. <laughs> I remember the paper dolls. Yeah. But did you play with Barbies and dress Barbies? When when I was in elementary, yes. Yes. But, so um, you always had yeah. that in you. Yeah. That was something innately in you yeah, about... I was really into the Spice Girl uh, Barbie dolls growing up. I remember them. Yeah. I love the Spice Girls, though. Mm -hmm. They were amazing. That, that I mean, kind of tells our age, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll let people guess at that. Yeah, we'll let them guess. <laughs> <laughs> age is just a number. Mm -hmm. yeah. And my mom's very uh, creative. So I think a, a lot of my creativity I also got from my mom. Um, the house would she would always decorate the house change the 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 decor in the house she was always dressed well even if she wasn't going anywhere and and so i think she kind of um it, that's kind of where i got that um inspiration and having the eye for um for good taste <laughs> no that, that's amazing i saw so i saw your work and this is intrinsic work that you do but it's more um it's kind of futuristic, right? Oh, thank you. I That's love why I, that. <laughs> when I was going through, I always try to research on everyone mm -hmm. that um, I bring on. And it was very, I saw that one with Usher. You did a commercial, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that was your, card. that was part of the Madame Black Designs. Yeah, that was um, within my shop. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I got to sketch it out and then um, I, I had some help get it manufactured uh, in downtown LA. But um, we had to still finish all the last minute um, touches to it, like um, getting the gloves, getting the proper mask, making sure that um, he, he he was a, a street performer character and no one knew that underneath the, the costume it, it was Usher. So it, it was a very fun, limited on time always, um, but um, I enjoyed it and, and that's something that I, I experienced and had a blast doing. So. But you, you started the company already. Mm -hmm. How was it in Arizona with your company? Was there a lot of opportunities there no. to build your um, portfolio? Well, the, the fun thing is in college, um, I did meet my friend Trisha and 
And she was like the beginning of my um, creative career as well, because six years later, she helped me get into the union for TV and film. But it took me six years to, to ask. <laughs> so when you're in designs, there's a yes. union for that too. Yes. Like, like actors have a union. Mm -hmm. And the directors have a union. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I joined the Designers Guild 892 before I joined 705. But then I realized if you don't have the connections, uh, 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 you know, you, you still kind of have to like... Uh, you know pay the bills so I decided okay well maybe right now it's not my moment to be designing but then I'm gonna try and get into costuming and see if I can um, learn as much as I can as I'm working my way up uh, yeah and um, and so now I do both but in the beginning I mainly did design and build because I was good at it so I started the business first um, and then um, I guess like two months in LA, I, I, I get thrown on a, on a feature film in Virginia. And I also have a nostalgia for Virginia because that was my start in, in the film world. Oh, okay. Yeah, so two months in LA, I, I get asked to work on a show and, and it was like a, a PA position. It wasn't like a, as a designer, but I was like, you know, I'm, I'm open to it. I'll, I'll try it out and nine weeks out there and I realized oh, I would love to costume design and then that's where I went from my brand to like making it more catered towards um, uh, costume design and one-offs versus a brand that you would sell in, in department stores. So in Arizona I did do the fashion design in college um, and then when I met the photographer we had package deals and so I would do the one-offs but they, they were just costumes and um but then I was able to kind of craft it more okay I want to do costume design for tv and film and and live television versus these one-offs that are just um uh for special occasions or um for private um clients and, and so just wanted to branch further and see where it would take me a nine gig weeks. that you got for the mm -hmm. nine weeks really helped you hone in on what you really love to do. Yeah, and, and so I, I feel like, okay, now I, I've done the building. I know how to build a costume. I know how to source the fabrics. I know patterns. But now I want to take it to the next level. And, and then that's when I I went into, you know, working with film and, and, and just hounding that. So... Yeah. Now forgive me, but source the fabrics. What does what does that mean? Well, if you're looking for a very particular um, look, you have to have the right fabric to be able to reflect that look that you're going for. And what if the fabric doesn't exist? Oh, and then you have to kind of uh, find okay the alternative option, and then try and source that. But what if it's more than your budget so you always have to kind of work with the budgets you have and then make sure the fabrics that you choose for your design are gonna function well with the pattern with the the, the manufacturing of the build or or it's just an idea okay yeah wow i did not know that there's so much to go into fashion mm -hmm. and costuming and they play hand in hand so that's why I'm not like, oh, I'm just the one thing. But um, at the same time, it's like, yes, I, I like to see myself as a costume designer, but then also I can build costumes and I can create the patterns from scratch. But it's nice as you, as you develop a, a stronger team, you can, you can hire the right person to help you um, with your vision come to life. Yeah, and that networking is so important, it's, right? Yeah, it's key. You can't do it by yourself. I noticed that like I, I kind of like geared more towards photographers and, and growing with photographers and, and being creative and, and collaborating because together we would grow together with our portfolios. Um, we were able to like enhance our work and, and, and we just collaborate on, on how to like take it to the next level. But now as a professional costumer and costume designer, I noticed that sometimes in my um, department, um, we don't really help each other grow together. And I feel like um, we should. 
it, it, it would help, um, you know, maybe not just, maybe I need an assistant on this show. Right, right. Or maybe right. I need a sewer for this show. It's nice if you can have a team to go to when you need them. Sometimes it's real competitive. Yeah, it's very competitive. In certain and, and sometimes you, you want to be able to do it all, but you can't at the end of the day if you're going for the quality. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Now, for our listeners, I know a lot of them are learning about the industry. You said PA. Oh, that's what? a good way to start. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't do a lot of PA in my beginnings, but I did I did give it a shot, and um, it's really hard. <laughs> and what does PA stand for, for the folks that um, don't know? A costume PA is um, like a costume production assistant. So if they need you to go... Um, pick up stuff, uh, go do returns, um, uh, pick up lunches, um, anything that they need. Um, you're kind of their go-to um, intern in a way. Um, and so I did it for a little bit. I, I had a, a, an amazing experience with um, Kim Barrett, who is the costume designer of like uh, the Matrix movies and, and, and those um, sci-fi films. And I was a huge fan of and um, that was a fun experience, inter like peeing for her for a week, and then um, yeah, and then my my experience in Virginia where I, I got to work under um, Carrie Kordowski for nine weeks. It was tough, but I realized like oh wow, I can take it to that next level and 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 uh, create and and not have to like um, only do um, costume building and. And styling, I can also um, design for um, for characters and, and for a bigger audience. I do specialize in um, performers. I love costume designing for dancers, and and I, I just want to do more of that. Um, so with my brand, I I recently did the Rose Bowl Parade, and and having to dress. Um, it, 30, 32 dancers um, from kids to adults and, and having these quick changes and making sure the costumes all are appropriate for the concept that we pitch to the clients. And so um, that was fun. A lot of dyeing, a lot of alterations, um, and, and some some builds, but not a lot for this project. So you do that yourself. You sometimes have to have hands on. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was lucky enough to find the right um, team teammates to, to help me get my vision um, done in, in time. But it, it was still a lot of work because of budget or, or the time restraints. So, yeah. Wow. So you do. A... And it was during Christmas. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you're most chaotic time to shop yeah. oh wow that must be hard getting in and out of the yeah. stores at that time yeah chaos so you work long hard hours yeah how is it to design clothing especially for performers because that's what you really mm -hmm. you have um, a niche in especially because they have to move right they yeah. have to you have to make them look good and they have to move and the functions and how the fabric play um yeah i I have a lot of experience with dancers from like from my beginnings working with musicians and, and dancers and then having to like also design for tours um, and making sure the repairs are are good for the next show and um, it's good like you just knowing what fabrics work best and and breathable and and what what the dance choreography is ahead of time so you know what silhouettes you can use. You want to make sure if they're wearing a headpiece, it's not going to fall off their head when they move or, or get in the way of their their dance. So Now, you work on sets, television mm -hmm. sets and film sets. Is there such a difference? I, I can imagine there's a difference with live performances and videos mm -hmm. opposed to film and TV. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, there, there's a difference. Um, I, I think like with um, TV and film, it, it's a little bit flexible with like you get them dressed ahead of, uh, in advance and you know, to wake up early before crew call and, and be there to like have their, their outfits ready to go, a steam pressed, um, all, the, all the pieces are there and have them on set on time. And then, um, yeah, and then you have to make sure you get all that back 
the same way you gave it to them. Um, I, I find it different compared to like dance performances because there's more quick changes. Sometimes you have to change people under a minute and then get them dressed and out on stage within seconds. So it, it's a kind of a different um, uh, vibe or a different um, rhythm. Yeah, I would say it's more high, really high yeah. paced, huh, for yeah. the music and the dancing opposed mm -hmm. to like when you're on set, it's mm -hmm. kind of a little bit slower for a you. A little bit, yeah, but it, it just depends on like what kind of um, project you're on. Because sometimes you need to be fast paced and then other times it's like you have a little bit more flexibility, but every show is different, I feel. Is, oh my gosh, you've done so much. Prints, live performances, TV film. I'm gonna say it that's hard because at the end of the day they start like gelling together or... I had a blast um, being able to be in New Orleans on my 30th birthday and uh, working on the Jeff Goldblum show the world according to Jeff Goldblum and I got to be his personal dresser on that on that show it's um, a TV show for Disney Plus and we we got to be out there in New Orleans and this was my first time and to like make sure you know Jeff looks the best like it looks good on camera but then also getting to celebrate my my 30th birthday at the Southern Decadence and so you had everyone dressed up in costumes and and luckily I didn't have to dress all of them but um, it was fun to just see see um how people in um, everyday life dress up in costumes um for, for for those southern decadents and and i got to be a part of it and and part of the show during that time so it's fun where your work can sometimes take you and the experiences you get to see yeah you've traveled a lot too right mm -hmm. Film in different they, states? Yeah, like I think depending on what they want to shoot. Um, for this situation, uh, for the show, um, they wanted to to kind of capture the Southern Decadence, which is like a, a mishmash of um, Mardi Gras and um, Pride. It, I love like, the Mardi Gras. That's yeah. one of my favorite events. I've, I've never been, but it, it felt like that. And there was glitter everywhere and... Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> see, I can see you smiling already. And you, anyone who's out there, if you see her work, if you go on her website, Madame Black Designs, you'll see what we're talking about. It's very um, futuristic. Um, it does have that Mardi Gras um, vibe. Um, I, when you say the era, you, you really like the 80s or 70s? Um, it's like, a little bit mixture of everything, though. Yeah. I thought it was a little bit like 60s, 70s, 80s. Mm -hmm. She kind of meshes it together. It's really unique, Thank your design. You. Thank you. Yeah, I, I try to not be in one um, category. I, I like to challenge myself. And so whether I'm dressing men or women or um, um, I, I just try and, and take it to the next level and, and always have that eccentric unique um -ness to try and separate it from the rest so on um, i would think on film and tv you have the experience on all type of eras right mm -hmm. like every era um 80s I, I have a lot of experience working in in 80s i worked on the chippendales um unrated um uh, and that's 80s and, and I was a customer on that project but I learned so much of like you know the men's wear their trousers up to their belly button and um, and, and the women they, they have like a, a different silhouette than they would in in the 70s so I, I feel like the colors and the silhouettes were a little bit more funky and, and just so much so many different silhouettes to choose from from like chunky belts to um, to like golds and silvers and sparkle and and oh my gosh I love that era yeah yeah the 80s was a great era for fashion mm -hmm. I mean maybe because you know I was part I, of that era everything and anything goes for the 80s like everything yeah it was really cool it, we just experimented mm -hmm. everyone just kind of experimented I mm -hmm. think in the 80s I thought that was really cool 
And they were so proud of it. And they were so confident in the outfits. Mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. <laughs> this pink, bright pink, out, uh, just the weirdest <gasps> bright pink that shirt was I was in. And then they're wearing these red varnays. And I, I don't know how, we're just put together all kinds mm -hmm. of odd things, but it was fun. It was just kind of expressing ourselves. So, uh, yeah, I, I really like that. So when I see these shows, like the 80s and 70s and mm -hmm. 60s, and, and the work that I see on there, I'm like, wow, they did good. They yeah. matched it yeah. with the hair and, and everything. It takes like a, a like an army to, to do all of that. Um, and then I've worked in the 70s, too. I worked on a show called Gaslit, and I got to help with shopping for it. And, and going into your modern-day department stores, you you have more of a challenge because there's certain silhouettes that yes we still use in today's modern day versus you know going to a costume house and renting it but you you can do a little bit of both like uh, certain silhouettes we still wear now that were worn in the 70s but you have to keep an eye out for like okay making sure that the the men's uh, dress shoe is like a, a wooden um base versus like a rubber uh, soul because then that wouldn't be um, 70s appropriate so just knowing you're doing your research before going out there and and shopping at your at your department stores but then it's nice that like we have amazing costume shops or costume houses curry um, all these um, vintage pieces from that era and and maintain them so we can keep using them for generations and no, Here's, that's great. Yeah, we're just here and we're mm -hmm. talking and enjoying um, learning from each other, yeah. and that's what's really important. And and it's fun to share because like sometimes I tell my boyfriend, I'm like, oh my gosh, it'd be fun to write a book or just like of all the experiences, and and sometimes you forget. But then, like, when you're doing something, you remember, you're like, oh, my God, this is where we, we shot this at 3 in the morning. Or we're like, oh, my goodness, this is where we did that scene where we, we were dressing, like, 375 people and, in downtown L.A. So it's, it's fun to, like, almost have L.A. as, like, your playground. Right. And your job kind of takes you to these different locations. And, and you have to just be ready for anything. And, yeah, it's. It's always, um, it's never a dull moment. Well, yeah. Jessica, I think you should write a book. <laughs> I was thinking, Costumer's Diary. Oh, yeah. If mm -hmm. anyone else has any yeah. ideas, just put them down in the comments. Mm -hmm. um, I think you should, because you have a lot of experience. You've worked with some amazing, amazing people. Oh, and dressing them and, um, you know, making sure the story is told. Before you came to Los Angeles, what was your perception before and then your perception, no. well, the reality of it? <laughs> I guess, you know, perception before and then the reality of your life in Los Angeles. Well, I feel like the, uh, I just felt like LA was amazing because uh, when I moved out here, I was 22. And so I think the first year of living in, in LA, I, I, I treated it like a holiday. So that first year, it was like, I'm on holiday. This is amazing. So I really took in L.A. Um, and, and in my 20s, I had a lot of really fun Hollywood experiences. Some I can share, some that I probably shouldn't. <laughs> so, you, so you vacationed when you got here. Kind of get that out of your system. Did, you got a yeah. party here for a while, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I moved here. Um, I, I was still, you know, trying to build a name, as, and, but I didn't take it as seriously. But I still made connections. It, I think sometimes when you're having fun doing what you enjoy, you have this glow and, and people are attracted to that. So even though my first year, I was still making the right um, contacts, whether it's like with models or actors or directors. But I think because I was so young, I kind of treated it more as like, oh, it's, this is fun. It's like we're hanging out, even though it's the best way. There's no right or wrong way of like creating. It's just like doing it and just making sure you get to evolve. Yeah. And now, how is it from? Um, now, I, I think living in Orange County um, does kind of, uh, doesn't keep me close enough to to making those connections. I recently worked with a, a director, um, Jane Clark, 
for um, Witchy Ways. And then um, in January, I, I got to work with um, a, a director in Virginia, and that one was for How to Catch a Killer. Uh, that one was, was very challenging just because I was away from LA and then you have to kind of like go thrifting for the, the pieces you, you, you need to, to create the characters. And so the director was very um, specific on, on some of the looks that he wanted. So I had to find a way to deliver, even though all the stores were at least a half hour away. And then all the good thrifting stores would be in the main city in Richmond an hour away. So if you need that one item, having to just go to your closest target would be 30 minutes. So that was a challenge, but we, we, we did it and we got it done. And that was a beautiful experience being out there. And so you thrift, so studios thrift, they, they buy a lot of their clothes at mm -hmm. the thrift stores. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You kind of, shop everywhere from um thrifting because you you'd be surprised what you can find thrifting and then um depending on the budget so if you have a, a infinite budget then you can go anywhere but if you're you know on a non-union project which is what i was doing in virginia you kind of have to work with what you can find and and sometimes it, it's a challenge because you have to work within the budget right Mm -hmm. Okay, so, that's good to know. So yeah, budgets and like executing the vision of the director and, and your vision and, and collaborating with the production designer. So it's like a lot of um, creatives and, and just trying to execute the, the vision and, and have it um, portray the story. Definitely. No, I get it because with what you talked about that earlier is that, you know, without the costumes, without the um, fashion, of that story it just is unbelievable it's not as believable yeah. you know you have to make it believable and that's not just the acting which is mm -hmm. important but the clothing the and the yeah. um, design the just the surroundings you mm -hmm. know of Absolutely. everything you guys are very detailed on sets because I've been on sets and I love being on sets because they're just so detailed, you know, with, mm -hmm. um, we'll have to get someone out here who designs the actual stu you know, the studios, because yeah. that's amazing too. You guys are so artistic. Oh, thank you. So, yeah. I, I mean, fashion is very, you're very artistic. So I know a lot of people have challenges when they come here financially. Mm. Um, was that a thing for you when you, did you just save your money when you first got here or um, did you get? Did you have to do odd jobs, odd gig jobs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I worked in like the bar field, um, bar um, industry for, for seven years. Really? Yeah, seven years yeah. while you were working on sets? Um, yes. Um, while, well, while, like, well, before I got in the union, before, once I got in the union, that's history. But uh, before, um, getting into 705 and 892 as, as, as a cocktail waitress and so that lifestyle was rough on my body but I was in my 20s so I was able to do both and um, I didn't I didn't sleep much but I, I really tried to like want to escape that um, industry because it's just not as healthy yeah I would pay the bills and and I did that for seven years until um, I started getting a name for myself and then slowly stepping away from it. Okay, that's what I was going to ask you. Was there a big break that made you step away or is yes. just a gradual? Oh, it was. Yeah, yeah. I, um, so I did that and then um, at one point I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm going to build a business doing this. And so I, I tried the LLC route. That was really hard. Um, I walked away for like a year or two to kind of just catch up on some of the finances because businesses are really hard to build from the ground up and I did it the wrong way and but I, I went on hiatus and then I um, became a brand ambassador for supplements and so I did that for like a year and I did a little bit of traveling with that so in that time I was paying stuff off but then I was also like thinking like what's my next move and that's when I reached out to my friend who um, who uh, got me in the union. And, um, and then that was my next journey. And then I started doing that um, in 2007, 2018. 
Okay, yeah. so you've been consistent with working on sets since 2018. Uh, union sets. Union sets. Yeah, so union sets, that career started in 2018, but I've been um, working on non-union sets uh, since 2012. Oh, wow, you have a lot of experience yeah. in the sets that you've been on. And then with your Madame Black designs. That is very hands-on, um, building costumes from the ground up. So you so. do... So you'll work on both of, mm -hmm. if you get a contract with your mm -hmm. private company, yeah. you'll do that. And, then and the nice thing is like, as a costume designer, I can build in house with my brand and I have the vendors, I have the machineries and, and, and the tools to get the job done as to like, you know, most people don't do both. You can't build a costume and design it. They have to like, branch off to a vendor that can build it or even um, um, a source, a source it. So I, I like to have that um, as my under my belt, being able to build it because then I know how to design something that is realistic. So you do both. Yeah. That's, you, that's really good. So anyone that comes to you, will you'll get the whole, yeah, the whole service. Yeah. And that is if they, they have the budget to, to do custom because custom can get really expensive so you have the illustration that takes time um, you need to um, uh, make a mock-up which you know th that takes time to create the pattern and you make the mock-up and then show your client your client whether it's an, an actor a musician or a director and then having to go find the fabric that's going to be suitable for that costume so it, it's a lot of steps and I think sometimes people think oh you just go and, and buy it at Macy's it's and like, put it together right yeah it, it, sometimes that's the case but um, if you want to do something from scratch and, and custom that's it, it's very important to have that experience because it's a lot of money that could go that you know that's a lot of money to, to waste if you don't know what you're doing Right. So when yeah. you do mock-up, is that the drawings that I the we see? Designers' drawings. Um, the des the illustrations is one thing. The concept art, and then um, the mock-up is actually making a prototype. I see. Okay, yeah. I got it. So the illustration is the drawings of mm -hmm. the because I don't know much about fashion, but oh. I do love it. But you yeah. know, when I see the drawings, you see mm -hmm. designers with their drawings. Yeah, and it's like that's that's the beginning of. Um, the, the steps and, and once you get the approval from your client from the sketches but that's the thing like I don't like to rely on the sketches because it's just a drawing like it's more about the mock-up because it's like this is what can we can build with the mock-up and sometimes maybe the silhouette has to uh, change a little bit and I like to think of it as a journey when you're designing something because you have this vision, but depending on the resources that you have and the budget, sometimes you kind of have to um, rework the the design to make it work on both ends. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So it, it's a lot. So much. It's yeah. a lot. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah. This is so exciting. I'm so glad you're here the today. The technical side and then yeah. the fun creative side. side. They, yeah, you got to know both. And, and that's one thing I know. I know the the manufacturing and the building and and the creating and the, the sourcing of the material and so I I, I love that I was able to, to learn that with my brand and and at a young age I, I knew what I wanted to do so I, I kind of got all of that out of the way all the the trials and errors like in my my earlier um, career uh, but now I feel like I'm ready to take it to the next level and and see where it goes yeah and where do you see that next level um I'm looking into maybe getting an agent yeah I, I feel like I'm ready to take that next step but I'm, I'm scared so I, I don't know why I haven't done it already <laughs> you know it's really interesting how fears can really yeah. hold us back and that's and that is one thing that they have to really work on and meditate through Mm -hmm. are those blockages and fears mm -hmm. of being good enough or why why you know this yeah. other person could get there why am I not getting there that's something that's internally our own journey and our own experiences mm -hmm. that get in the way 
I see that a lot. And I'm also working on that as an actor and a host. And it's and, normal mm -hmm. to have those because you're in a city with so many brilliant artists and and sometimes you feel like you're not ready yet. You're not ready yet. Just like I said, it took me six years to reach out to my friend and say, hey, um, get me in 705 because I'm ready now. Like I'm ready to to take it to that level. And and they, they did it, you know, and I could have done it all, like years back, but I chose 2018. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I think more and more, especially young people, mm -hmm. which it's, becoming more maybe because of the the pandemic mm -hmm. um, losing people and our lives you know it's, it's there's no guarantees exactly. that we're just got to be courageous and just do it just do it even if you're not ready and that's how you learn that's the journey like you said it I thought like you're never ready some are more prepared than others and yeah, that sounds cliche but it's true it, it is um and I I, I like that I'm being interviewed by you because then it kind of shows like the time is now it's now to yeah now go for it and just see where we go yeah and just have faith yeah. in yourself and faith in um what in you believe journey. in in the yeah. journey and know that you know what you know mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just impressed so you do the drawings too right i'm still yeah. back on the drawings because i think that is amazing so you do the drawings yeah, i was doing a little bit of drawing last night i should have brought it in but um but yeah i, I have I, I really want to be an illustrator as well as um, keep doing the costume design. So if I can't costume design something, maybe somebody can hire me to uh, be a concept artist for their project. Wow, so in your career, you could take pieces of different skill sets and monetize them mm -hmm. in, in different ways. Yeah. That is, that is really smart. Yeah. If you, you know, if you haven't thought about it yourself, think about your skill sets um, and what pieces are really needed, you know, in your community or in whatever, exactly. the inter especially the entertainment field, that's, yeah, that's what we're talking I, about. I, I feel like if only more customers and more costume designers would work together to help each other, you know, oh, I, I'm available, let me illustrate something for you, or I'm available, let me... Um, help you sew something and then like switch off like oh I'm designing something can you help me shop for this and and just be an all-around like um, team right yeah and then you'd be surprised like where you can go together and, and help each other flourish versus like oh my gosh like I I, I gotta do this by myself you know or I, I can do it all because at the end of the day you're gonna stretch yourself thin yeah and it really does take um, a, your village or your tribe and yeah. I, I think in los angeles that's a struggle in itself is finding out your tribe there's so many people here so that are people. are clawing up their ladder <laughs> or whatever no one has time yeah. nobody has time just <laughs> driving is an oh, hour each way long. but yeah. i think that's the key is to find people who have the same um goals mm -hmm. like finding out what their goals are hey what's your goal what do you want to do if they're just as passionate, then those are the ones that you want to connect with and, and you know, stick with yeah. to help you through things. Um, I see that a lot, too. When you do find those people, you want to keep hold them close. Them. Hold yeah. on to them. Yeah. Um, it's important. Mm -hmm. And I'm lucky. Like, I found some great um, seamstresses along the way, pattern makers, um, uh, shoppers. And it's it's fun when, when you have a project that you can just bring them on and, and just make like almost the impossible possible that's yeah. the most rewarding feeling when you see it on the monitor you're like oh wow we made it happen and you see all your costume pieces on on the monitor or on the screen yeah well i appreciate you 100 percent, and all of you costume designers out there in the world and customers and customers <laughs> and wardrobe stylists yes, and because yeah i mean i'm not i'm not really good at styling myself but i copy <laughs> and i just kind of look at people what people are doing so that's from these folks these folks are giving yeah. us some design inspiration mm -hmm. So now let's talk about your successes and celebrate your successes. What, what are your successes or what does success mean to you in your, your field? Success, Personally or professionally, either one. Success to me, I, I think the fact that I'm still doing it and I, I came out here um, 
10 years ago and, and I'm still doing it, to me that's a success that I didn't give up and I'm still going for it and I, I'm chipping away and I wake up and I know what I want to do. So to me that's a success that you're able to work in, in the line of work that you, you dreamed of and dreams come true. You just have to be ready when the opportunity shows up. Yeah. And to make a living off of it now. Yeah. You don't have to work doing yeah. the side gigs as much. Yeah, and, and some of the side gigs I did in the beginning is like, yeah, I, I did do a lot of sewing for um, other customers and, and build pieces for their projects. But then I'm like, hmm, maybe I should do my own projects. And then you take it to the next level. And then you're like, wait a second, I need someone to sew them for me. And then you take it to the next level. So it's nice to see the progression as well as like wow I'm still here I'm still doing it but now I'm at a at a higher um, platform than I was 10 years ago yeah I think that's amazing and any folks out there in Los Angeles area that would love to collaborate with Jessica yeah just hit her up yes. um, I'm actually gonna have her website down below connected to this YouTube video and for the folks out in podcast world come out to um, YouTube world and watch us in person yeah really not person but at least you can see our faces <laughs> see a little bit put of a, us what we look face like to the voice exactly <laughs> you'll yeah. probably see side of my side face but that's okay <laughs> we're getting side there profile. side profile but <laughs> you'll at least get to see our smiles mm -hmm. um, so hopefully that'll make your day um, so I'm so ecstatic about everything that you've said it, because it's so inspirational, Jessica. It's just your story and the fact that you knew this very early on and you continued and you had the, cur the courage to continue doing this and not knowing if it's going to be like it's if you're going to make if you're going to make money to pay your bills or your yeah. rent. At one point, I thought I'm like, oh my goodness, I have failed. But you always have this weird like demon in the back of your mind saying you're not good enough but if you just let that just pass you by like a cloud and just focus on like I can do this and avoid those those demons in your head just remember it's gonna be okay you're gonna you're gonna be fine you just have to keep doing it and you know, never stop that's that's the thing is to yeah. keep the momentum keep the focus and we talked about that, right? Those voices in our yeah. head. I know I have to work on it continuously. Mm -hmm. I mean, even doing this podcast and the hosting, um, coming from a place where, you know, I had speech therapy as a child, you know, for many years because I stuttered. And I was so embarrassed and kind of bullied as a kid. But, you know, I challenged myself. I kept saying, no, I am a talker. I love, I love to ask questions. I'm curious. I'm going to continue this. And I think you, and it does, your voices in your head can say, oh, you're not good enough, or just stop it already. And you're like, no, mm -hmm. I'm not going to stop it. I'm going to continue challenging myself and getting better and grow. Mm -hmm. That's a part of life. The it beautiful is. part of, of where we are, the fact that we get to pursue what we dream of doing. And there's people in other parts of the world that can't, you know, right. and, and it's just, it's, so nice to be able to like wake up and I get to to do this and I get to meet you and, and talk about what we do for a living and yeah it's, it's a magical world and and there's beauty in it with costumes <laughs> yeah and you know that's the thing we have to yeah. look at and stay positive exactly. um people internally we have to start internally I tell everyone to stay kind, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing that we have to do is be kind with ourselves first. Ooh, yes, you can't be kind to anyone else until you're kind with yourself. Mm -hmm. That took me some years to understand. Because, you know, you're nice to everyone. You try to be nice. Mm -hmm. But then there's, if you don't have that kindness for yourself, you become resentful. Yeah, you got to uh, check in, you yeah. know, see what, what your body needs. Um, I know this week I... I, I've been working a lot and, and my body was telling me I'm tired and, and I got emotional my because I was so tired. So sometimes that's like when you have to like sometimes, you know, slow down a little bit and just know that you're doing the best you can and just, you know, keep at it. 
Exactly. Yeah. Just keep going. Mm -hmm. Take a break. Yeah. If you need to take a break. Chime in with your body. See how you're yeah. doing. Yeah. Mental breaks yes. are important. Emotional breaks. Yes. Mm -hmm. You need to just be home in your bed and cry all day. Go <laughs> for it. I don't care. Go or for binge, it. Binge a Netflix show. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Order a pizza. <laughs> yeah. Milkshake. Put yeah. that on the top. Just mm -hmm. do it. Do your 3,000 calories and get over with. And then <laughs> like get that. back on the bike. Yeah. Get back on the bike. Literally. All right. <laughs> right? <laughs> so what um tips or um yeah tips for our listeners out there who want to go into this kind of field, field. do you uh, have for them books or anything that you can think of if someone was going to come to you and ask you a student i would say there's a lot of avenues there's lots of avenues from um fashion styling to costume design to sewing and to shopping to being on set to being an actor's personal dresser. So there's so many avenues you can take and maybe just focus on what you want to do and and then just go for it because you want to be the best at what you do and and um, and then the, the the rest is is yours like to to decide on that. So yeah. So you determine what your best is. You're not comparing yourself to other mm -hmm. No, I, I, I try not to, but, um, but yeah, like I, I would love to be an illustrator and costume designer. That's my ultimate, um, goal, but, uh, but I costume, I'm a, a costumer as well. So with costuming, I, I get to also, you know, work in other avenues like shopping. I, I get to shop for the, the characters for, for other designers. And then, um, uh, organization is is key so it's also good to like knowing how to be organized on set so then when you're on your own show you know how to keep track of every every piece of costume um, the actor wears and and making sure that um, you know you you know how to run a department so it all kind of plays hand in hand but always remember focus on what you want to do and, and just run with it. So I like that. Yeah, that's a very positive tip and yeah. advice. And <laughs> oh, Jessica, this was so amazing I talking to fun. you. Yeah, this was I great. learned so much. Thank you so much for coming out. Mm -hmm. And I just wish you the best of luck with everything that you're doing. And thank you. I feel like you will be getting an agent. I know you oh, will be getting you. an agent and going to up to the next <laughs> level. So up and comer here, you'll be seeing her on some major shows. I'm sure. Oh. So watch out for her name. Check out her IMDb as well and her uh, website. Um, yeah. And you can get some ideas and, and yeah, just kind of see how everything goes. Unravels, yeah. Yeah. Well, 2023. Yes, 2023. <laughs> We're going out strong, everyone. Yes. Let's do this. Let's go after what you want to do and what brings joy and passion to you. And don't be scared. Just and go for it. Just go for it. Yes. And, you know, above all, just stay kind. Be kind to yourself. And remember, kindness still matters. All right, one okay. more time. That's okay. We can do this many times. So wait, what? Mm -hmm. Okay. The comfort of your home. Exactly. But they don't know that. No. <laughs> we're, we're up here in this. Cut five. Yeah. Hi, okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, thank you.